So I wasn't planning to make a video today. Uh, I was actually worried about the dog. He was having problems and I gave him back to my ex-wife and uh, she does a better job of taking care of him than me. But let's get into the things that I think will help you the most before I get into the meat of the video. I bought this new uh, OTK. Hopefully you can see that. Heat for pain relief infrared heating pad and uh, I've tried it out and I'm going to tell you what I mean I, I, I've got massage therapy coming tomorrow and by the way if you're not into massage therapy uh, if you've ever broken your neck or you know had surgery I mean it's massage therapy they can get in and unknot those muscles but I'm telling you it says relieves pain reduces tension and stress I'm not sure about that enhances blood circulation maybe so and helps muscular relaxation but I'm gonna tell you what I'm in less pain and I've only used this thing one night <laughs> so so maybe uh, the, the, the company is www. I, by the way I don't get any money for this this isn't a paid advertisement udktechnology.com you can find them on YouTube but just look for uh, infrared heating pad uh, it wasn't cheap man it was 130 bucks and I have a heating pad and I use a regular heating pad on a regular basis but it just doesn't seem to do no damn good but anyway let's get into the news just a little bit uh, this isn't a watching the world burn video I, I actually want to talk about the book and what's coming so uh, this was from Sprinter countries with the largest military submarine fleet guess who has the largest submarine fleet and Colonel Douglas McGregor talked about this and I was like damn that guy seems to know everything <laughs> Russia. Russia is at 65. We're at 64. China's at 61. Can you imagine? North Korea has 35 uh, submarines. Japan is 23. I, I, who would have thought Japan? And South Korea is 22. Iran, Iran, of all things, 19. India, 18. Turkey is 12. And Greece at 11. And I just thought that was a, that was a post on X. Uh, I have to trust the numbers did I research it and make sure those numbers are correct no I did not <laughs> but, but I find these things interesting I'm like people post stuff and you're just like son of a bitch Russia has more submarines than the United States and McGregor talks about the fact that we can't support a war you know with U.S. troops in Ukraine although we have U.S. troops in Ukraine right now fighting uh, because if we did get into a full-fledged war without nukes flying about, which probably would happen, uh, we still couldn't be able to get our ships across the ocean because the Russians would sink all our ships. I, you know, I, it amazes me the stupidity of our elected officials. This was DD Geopolitics. Uh, President Assad, in an interview with a Russian journalist, uh, Vladimir, isn't it amazing how many people in Russia are named Vladimir? <laughs> <laughs> it just cracks me up. Slovenian. The Palestinians are not a legal, a legal a state that aggresses against other state, nor is it another people coming to occupy the territory of another people in a neighboring state. The Palestinians are the rightful owners of this land, and it is their land that has been occupied. They have been killed for nearly 80 years. We cannot speak about the current situation without addressing the problem as a whole. We cannot talk about... Gaza alone, it's part of the Palestinian cause. The Palestinian is one cause. Israel is an occupier. It's an aggressive, and it kills Palestinians because they are defending themselves. That is the summary. And then, of course, it goes on from there. Well, I'll finish off reading it. The people in the West are not bad people, but the media is aligned with politicians to make the people ignorant so that they can say anything to them and make them believe anything yeah the democrats the democrats control the media and uh the narrative that you get is that all palestinians are subhuman and they all must die which is what the zionists in israel are doing it's a genocide and uh, and, and i just love the fact that uh, galloway just got elected in great britain on a platform talking about the genocide that's taking place in gaza because that's what the democrats the blood thirsty Democrats want. They want all Arabs dead. If you're an Arab in the United States, a Muslim in the United States, how in the hell can you vote Democrat? I just want somebody explain this to me. Leave a comment below. All right, so let's just keep going. So, I, you know, I'm into the news just briefly here. Former head of, 
of the CIA, former Secretary of Defense Robert Gates, boy, what an asshole this guy is, calls for attacking the Crimean Bridge. What the hell? I did a video on the Crimean Bridge. Why is it everybody wants to blow up this damn bridge? It, I mean, it'd be like blowing up the uh, the Mackinac Bridge up in Michigan. You know, everybody's fixated on this wonderful creation that the Russians put together between Russia and Crimea, and, uh, and but they all want it destroyed. It, it cracks, and of course the Germans are thirsting at the teeth. If, if you haven't been following along, they just leaked a, a cable on how they want to blow it up. But anyway, according to him, this is not a difficult matter and would have a strong impact on the Russians, both psychologically and militarily. How does blowing up a bridge affect people psychologically and militarily? There's no military equipment that even goes across the damn bridge. These people are dumber than a bag of stones. I mean, good God. So let's just keep going. Holy moly. So this is their territory. If they decide to attack targets, they will attack targets inside Ukraine, not inside Russia, no matter what Putin claims he incites. So this guy, Robert Gates, how in the hell did he rise to a position of power? I mean, I'm going to tell you, we're going to get into a couple pages in my book. Now, this was, uh, I might have put this in a previous video, but it, Saudi Arabia has denied Western coalition countries access to its airspace to carry out airstrikes on Yemen. Well, yeah, because Yemen would blow up their oil fields. <laughs> I mean, what the hell? At least Saudi Arabia has one brain cell left in their heads. Not in the United States, the Biden administration. By the way, Victoria Newland, the, the spider. Sounds like she has resigned. I mean, oh my God, you know, but I mean, what we need to do is we need to move her to Ukraine. She obviously fostered Ukraine. She killed over a million Ukrainians. I think she needs to go live in Ukraine. I, if you're for that, you know, give me a thumbs up, you know, give me a like on this video. I want Victoria Nolan to move to Ukraine because she is the culprit of killing over a million Ukrainians. Kind of like Fachi. Fachi killed millions of people around the world. Of course, neither one of them are in jail, which is amazing to me. It's kind of like, you know, if Hitler had survived the war, that nobody would throw Hitler in jail uh, after he killed you know, 25 million Russians. I mean, at least Hitler had the sense to blow his own brains out. But I mean, even Victoria Nuland, you know, I don't think she's going to blow her brains out. Fachi's not going to blow his brains out. And these are, these are people that have killed millions upon millions of people around the world. I mean, you know, it, it, the whole world just seems really bizarre to me at this point. I, I know that God's out there and he's fighting for us, but, uh, you know, we'll see. Uh, of course, and then there was uh, even more massacres that were carried out by the Israelis. So let's get into a little bit of stuff. You know, this is uh, called... Ferry Morse, F-E-R-R-Y-M-O-R-S-E, professional grade vermiculite, vermiculite. Now, if you didn't know, it's, it's seed growing season here in Florida, and I've got these seed trays, and I actually have the soil ready to go, so I'm going to be planting, and there's heating pads that actually go underneath these seeds. You can go on YouTube and learn how to grow seeds, so the garden is going to get going, and uh, I'm looking forward to that, uh, but... The whole purpose of this video was just to talk about the book a little bit because supposedly uh, something is going to drop tomorrow. I don't know. I don't know who might watch it, uh, if, if, if anybody will. Uh, it's, uh, I'm going to give you the organization, Our Country, Our Choice. I'm hoping that the book is going to be freely available to you on their website. Uh, that's what I asked them to do. Now, it's been almost two or three weeks since I sat down with Colonel Douglas McGregor and we talked about things. Uh, I guess we'll see. But I did want to read you the first couple pages uh, of the book, and I know this is going to bore the shit out of you, uh, but, you know, it's something worth reading. I mean, even if you don't want all the technical stuff in the book, like uh, hardware that you need, uh, uh, the Internet is infected, tech... ISP, you know, how to work with your internet service provider. Uh, how do we use encryption software? Uh, verifying downloads before installation. Encrypting USB drives and folders. I mean, this book is a wealth of information. I spent five years of my life writing it. And so I just wanted to give you a quick sample of what's in the book, because if it does drop tomorrow, I hope you have the common sense. And I understand everybody's got limited time, and who reads books anymore, right? I mean, you know, but still. So... <clears throat> Let's just read the first two pages, and this, uh, you can turn off right here because it's going to get boring here. 
While it is the intentions of this book to help people worldwide achieve a greater degree of internet privacy and freedom, I cannot know or exhaustively write about how much governments are spying on their citizens. I did a whole video on how the NSA is spying on you. Everything you do on your cell phone, it's a weapon. Your cell phone is a destructive piece of equipment. It should be viewed as a gun, okay, that you're giving to your kids. And I did a whole video on that. And of course, I got crushed. <laughs> I'm completely censored. I, I was censored before. Then I got censored even more. But let's just keep going. Since I am a citizen of the United States, I chose to use the U.S. government as my example of how expensive and well-funded these apparatuses have become in conducting Internet spying on your online activity. By the way, I did ask Colonel Douglas McGregor to read the first chapter. Maybe he did, maybe he didn't. He's a very, very busy man. I can't imagine that he would take time out to read my book. In my country... the the communication trust between citizens worldwide and the U.S. government has been grossly violated on a monumental scale. We're going to get into some of that, okay? For example, the United States national security state has gone much too far in its collection of U.S. citizens and our friendly foreign neighbors' private data. I don't understand how U.S. veterans and our younger... By the way, I, my disappointment in U.S. veterans is just beyond belief. They don't give a fuck about anything. I mean, I, I've approached three veterans organizations and asked them to contact Our Country, Our Choice because all Colonel Douglas McGregor wants to do is come up and give a, a speech to the veterans and say, you know, hey, you know, maybe we need to, like, uh, do something besides uh, send candy to our troops overseas. But anyway, so that's just me. Foreign neighbors' private data. I don't, younger generation can ignore this penetration into their privacy. But it is my hope and dream that they will someday wake up and object to these threats that have requested that this monitoring cease. The world also discovered that the U.S. NSA, the largest taxpayer-funded intelligence agency on the earth. Can you imagine? We're spending so damn much money on the NSA to spy on us. As a nation, and the American people don't give a shit, especially veterans. Veterans don't care. I mean, they, they just want to, like, you know, go play golf and exist on their... You know what? It's all, all that shit's coming to an end. You know, all your little pensions and everything, it's all coming to an end. But, you know, I, I hope that uh, they, you know, they'll, they'll feel the pain soon. But let's just keep going. Was monitoring the calls of over 35 world leaders, as well has done immense harm to the United States' relations with its allies, which... Didn't seem to happen. <laughs> I mean, I wrote this back in 2016. And this was Angela Merkel, and she was being spied on by the NSA. And, uh, and she objected to it. But somehow they got a grip on all the European leaders. And then they, they got Germany with Schultz to commit suicide. I guess they got... My only guess is they got so much dirt on them that they'll just do anything that the United States CIA tells them to do. And that's that's the situation in Europe right now. And, and that's why the people there aren't represented at all, just like we aren't. But let's just keep going. From the article, NSA monitored calls of 35 world leaders after U.S. officials handed over contacts by James Ball at The Guardian, Friday, uh, 25th, October, 2013, the revelation is set to add to monitoring diplomatic tensions between the United States and its allies. After the German Chancellor and Angela Merkel on Wednesday accused the U.S. of tapping into her mobile phone. Duh! <laughs> they tapped into everybody's mobile phone. <laughs> Around the world! But let's just keep going. After Merkel's allegations became public, White House Press Secretary J. Camney Carney, C-A-R-N-E-Y, Carney, issued a statement that said the United States is not monitoring and will not monitor the German Chancellor's communications. But that failed to quell the, the row as officials in Berlin, Berlin quickly pointed out that the U.S. did not deny monitoring the phone in the past. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I guess Germany and the rest of the world is waking up to the fact that we monitor everything. We collect everything with the NSA, a facility 25 miles out of Utah. You know, if you want to go visit, that's what I encourage you to do. I get a lot of leftists that go, oh, you're lying, you're lying, you're lying. Go, go visit fucking Utah, man. You don't need to listen to me. Go there and see how close, it's like Area 51 on steroids. I guarantee you, you can't get close to this NSA facility. Uh, or, or You could get closer to Area 51 than you can to this NSA facility. All right, so then it goes on. 
Arriving in Brussels for an EU summit, Merkel accused the United States of a breach of trust. We need to have trust in our allies and partners, and this must be established once again. I repeat that spying among friends is not acceptable against anyone, and that goes for every citizen in Germany. And of course, then I give you the Guardian article. The electronic surveillance will continue due to the lack of U.S. laws to enforce or pronounce this activity as criminal. But by the way, I'm, I'm putting up my digital Fourth Amendment. I'm hoping that, that it will get posted on our country, our choice. But let's just keep going because there are no laws. It's not written in the Constitution. We didn't have an internet when the U.S. Constitution was written. Do you understand that? So let's just keep going. The outrage of U.S. citizens' lack of attention or care are for this ignominy. American citizens appear to have grown bored with the values such as privacy, due process of law, and the rise of power in the uber-executive branch of the United States government. How prophetic was that back in 19 or, or 2016? Can you imagine? I wrote these words back then, and now it's, it's, it's on steroids, isn't it? Uh, so I just wanted to talk just a bit. I know, good God, I guess I, to read one page takes a freaking hour video. So before Edward Snowden revealed the extent to which the NSA apparatus had expanded to spy on the inter Internet Directory of National Intelligence, James Clapper. Now, why isn't James Clapper in jail? Do you understand that he lied to Congress? He lied to the American people? And the guy is probably drinking pina coladas on an island somewhere. But let's just keep going. James Clapper testified to the U.S. Congress that NSA was not collecting data on millions of U.S. citizens and Internet users worldwide. Lying to Congress in the United States used to be considered perjury, a federal offense. But Clapper remains to this day, 2024, I guess maybe the guy will die soon, uh, unscathed for committing this crime. Clapper later said that he offered Congress the least. Now imagine this. <laughs> I mean, this is so. This is so sick. A, a, the least untruthful statement that he could think of. What is amazing is how U.S. Congress and the U.S. President seem to look the other way as Clapper remained in a position of his NSA power and faced no prosecution or consequences for the commission of this offense. The Obama administration refused, refused to even interrogate Clapper, fire or punish him in any fashion. Ask yourself, why is that? Well, because the Obama administration was the, the Marxist communist Democrats that wanted to destroy the United States. And they saw Clapper as a tool that they're going to use to do that. But let's just keep going. I, now that I can look back in history and see how my words reflect everything. Is he or the, re the next J. Edgar Hoover? Well, absolutely he is. He knows everything about everybody. Uh, with dirt on every politician so that he can remain in power? It certainly seems so as he unquestionably had the NSA apparatus funded in a shiny new $3 billion Utah data facility to locate 25 miles out of uh, the Salt Lake City International Airport. To buffet all of this bad publicity, the Obama administration cited 22 separate briefings or meetings with members of Congress informing them of the details of the PRISM program. By the way, that was revealed by Edward Snowden. In articles and media releases by, to, by members of Congress, they admit that they were briefed in Section 702 of FISA, but some of them confessed that they did not understand the intricacies of the program or how broad in scope it was in collecting U.S. citizens' internet slash activity data. That's because everybody in Congress graduated from a freaking Ivy League school. They're dumber than a bag of stones. These We got the stupidest people in the United States leading the country. All right, so I, I, I got to at least get through two pages. I know you can cut this video off anytime you want. Mr. Snowden later dispelled Clapper's earlier testimony when he revealed the details about the existence of the clandestine mass surveillance and data mining program called PRISM. The PRISM program was launched in 2007 to collect stored internet communications from the servers of internet backbones, fiber optic cables, of technology giants such as Apple. Remember, and by the way, I, I remember back then there was AOL. I guess, the, you know, that's fun. Apple, AOL, Facebook, Google, Microsoft, PalTalk, Skype, Verizon, Yahoo, YouTube, and others. This massive tracking and monitoring program collects emails, file transfers, notifications of target activity, logins, etc., photos, telephone, social media, video, video conference, and voice over IP chats, 
and is touted as the number one source of raw intelligence used for NSA analytic reports. This data includes locations and unique device signatures of individuals that they target. In other words, the NSA has everything. They know everything about you. You think that I'm not going to get censored even more for putting this video up? You better fucking believe it. Okay, let's just keep going. This is just, this is just the first two pages of the first chapter of a 1,100-page book that you need to download at our country, ourchoice.com. Let's keep going. The PRISM program is estimated to cost the United States taxpayers 20, well, this is back in 2016, $20 million per year. What is most disturbing is who has access to the data and how few, if any, legal challenges to which the I NSA and the IRS... By the way, the NSA funnels all your information to the IRS, so the IRS knows everything about you. It's the most invasive, corrupt government. I mean, Soviet Union looks like nothing compared to the United States government. Let's just keep going. So, and it, it must adhere and look at this data. According to Wiki, now by the way, now Wiki's not a trusted resource anymore, but back in 2016, they did have some good data, so I'm going to read you what they had to say. According to the Guardian's Glenn Greenwald, even low-level NSA analysts are allowed to search and listen to the communications of Americans and other people without court approval and supervision. Greenwald said that low-level analysts can, via systems like prison, listen to whatever emails they want. Whatever telephone calls, browsing histories, Microsoft Word documents, and it's all done with no need to go to court, with no need to even get a supervisor approval on the part of the analyst. And then, of course, I cite various resources, the Washington Post, Huffington Post, USA Today, and, and other uh, uh, sources that I use to get this because everybody all the left is going, where are your sources? How can you prove it? Well, look at my fucking book. <coughs> Everything's right here. We're going to continue at least <coughs> finish off two pages of the book. I'm sorry. <clears throat> I get a little carried away. The data gathering by the NSA was found to go much further when Edward Snowden revealed that the NSA and the British government communications, GCHQ. Now, the GCHQ is in partnership with the United States government. That's the British arm. They are in cahoots together. Understand that. I, and, and so the British people, there's nothing that the British people do that their government doesn't know about. But let's keep going. We're also tapping into fiber backbones operated overseas by Google and Yahoo, decrypting all the digital traffic before it gets into their private clouds, storing copies and then re-encrypting it before sending it on its way. This is an entirely different program from the PRISM program known in NSA jargon as muscular of which executives at Yahoo and Google denied any knowledge, which is beyond belief. This is a fascist government. You know that Google and Yahoo know exactly what the NSA is up to. I'm just saying. The muscular surveillance program is jointly operated by GC, but the GCA, GCHQ is the primary operator, by the way, see how they're in cahoots, of the program. We have to wonder about U.S. corporate details of their knowledge of this since the U.S. companies willingly allow the NSA direct access to their networks without the world knowing about it. But yet, they have vehemently denied any knowledge of this added surveillance that was taking place. Because of these revelations, the union representing German journalists, back when we had German journalists, advised its members to avoid Google and Yahoo search engines or even using them for digital... By the way, and that's what I've been telling you. Use DuckDuckGo. Use StartPage.com. Do not use Google. I found out tonight. I, I actually downloaded DuckDuckGo onto my phone, and guess what the default search engine was? Google. <laughs> I was like, holy shit. Even a, a private search engine like DuckDuckGo is using Google as its primary search engine. Now, DuckDuckGo goes out and they sweep all kinds of search engines, but still... Isn't that unbelievable? If you're on an iPhone, your default search engine is Google. Google has 95% of the searches. No wonder nobody can find that cybersecurity guy. But let's just keep going. Citizens. The Germans are extremely sensitive to maintaining their citizens' privacy. They used to be. Because of the eavesdropping of the Stasi secret police. You know what? And I, 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 have, I want to send out a plea to the East Germans. Do you remember what it was like under the Stasi? I mean, I know it's been about, you know, what, 50 years now? 
Well, I mean, when did the Berlin Wall come down? I don't think it came. I can't remember the year. I mean, it was under what? It was under Reagan, right? So the East Germans should have a very fresh knowledge of what the Stasi uh, were doing to them. And yet now they allow everything that they do to be spied on. It's unbelievable. Stasi police in former communist East Germany. The German local internet traffic from foreign intelligence services. The Germans have some of the strictest privacy policies in the world. And then, of course, I cite various uh, uh, things. And so this video got too long. Uh, you know what? I, I guess, you know, when I do my uh, uh, watching the world burn videos, I guess I'll just do a c couple readings. I mean, we only got through two pages. There's 1,100 pages in this book. I, I'm just going to tell you, you need to download it and you need to read it. Peace out. Stay free. Oh, and this is the book. Let's get that on the video. The Internet is Infected. The ultimate cybersecurity guide for small business and home computing. Because our world needs this. If you wish to follow me other places, I post on many topics. My main interest is geopolitics. To follow me for geopolitics, I am that cybersecurity guy on YouTube. Under the playlist, Watching the World Burn. On Rumble, my channel is simply The Burn. I also post all my videos on X. That handle is that cyber sec guy, that cyber sec guy. I'm also on Getter and True Social. On Getter, it's the same as X. That cyber sec guy, and on True Social, it is that cybersecurity guy. I also do minimal postings on Telegram at the world burning. The world burning on Telegram. I'm limited to two gigabytes there, so I don't post often unless it's a short video. I also do videos on outdoor activity because I'm into of hiking mainly. But it's Outdoors with Kirk on Rumble. That is my main channel for outdoor activity. But I also have a playlist on YouTube called Hiking, Biking, and Camping in the United States. Lastly, I do reviews and tutorials and commentary on various products. On Rumble, it is just simply that cybersecurity guy. That's my catch-all for any video that doesn't fit in geopolitics or outdoors. On YouTube, it is reviews, tutorials, and commentary on products. Hope you can follow me other places. Peace out. Stay free.